right, Buenos Dias Mis Amigos. Okay, so I'm going to touch on this, and I'm going to touch on that. But first of all, I want to introduce to you uh, a thought, something that I think is very interesting, just an idea that I had in relation to what it's going to be like when we are resurrected. All right, now you'll have to, there we go. Elijah. Okay, I was going to see it. I couldn't remember the name. Okay, so Elijah. Uh, you know, notice how it says here, it, it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. All right, this is just one example um, that I want to give. So the other day I talked about this idea of being able to communicate with one another without a device in the life to come now I'm just speculating right I'm not uh, basing this on anything other than what we're seeing in this world in this life uh, if it were to serve as an example of the life to come that might be one example right and so also I wanna maybe just uh, ponder this idea of transportation you know in the life to come are we gonna be driving around in cars you know are the, if, if that's what you think is it gonna be gas fuel cars electric cars steam engine cars what kind of cars I mean is it going to be necessary? It's interesting because you have to consider that we're going to have eternal life. So we're going to have the best of the best forever. Uh, and you look at, you know, the evolution of automobiles. It's fantastic. But there's no way you can say, well, it doesn't get any better than what we have right now now maybe in this world this is it right but in this sense of eternal life uh, there's got to be a better way <laughs> right um, you know it's interesting because back in the 70s one of the most popular cartoons was the Jetsons and the idea was in the future we'd be we'd have our own little you know spaceships and we'd be you know getting in our aircraft and you know going to work or going to school or whatever that sort of thing uh, of course that's uh that's never gonna happen in this world right this world will come to an end before that happens but it's a fascinating idea now think about okay well let's say that's the way it's gonna be in the life to come hereafter well um, then comes the question well how fast are we gonna be able to travel um, you know and isn't there always this natural tendency or this natural desire to want to go even faster well think about this um, here in 2 Kings chapter 2 and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into a whirlwind or into heaven by a whirlwind excuse me alright so we know that God takes Elijah in a whirlwind and sets him in another place alright takes him from one place to another place well if God could do that to Elijah why wouldn't we be able to do that in the life to come hereafter? Now, boy, oh boy, you know, <laughs> there's something I want to share with you, okay? Um, well, it just came to mind that I, I had. I must have had some strange dreams last night. But, um, 
Now what what am I looking for? Oh, and he says, um, I, I call you friends, right? Jesus calls us friends. Now henceforth I call you not servants, for a servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Alright. Now consider this that when we are resurrected we will have everything available for us no limits we are essentially one with God that's almost hard to get uh, to wrap your head around to wrap my head around but um, whatever God can do we're going to be able to do does that make sense now there's a verse I want to say in Romans that's gonna help support that view and I gotta apologize right now cuz I I don't recall it I don't recall it and I, I just don't recall what it was the wording of the verse but the idea is very similar to that so you know what I might have to just put that on pause and move on to the next subject um, I hope you understand that I, you know I just uh, I woke up not uh, not too long ago you know and drinking coffee and uh, I had this idea I want to share but of course uh, you know there's one verse that I want to share and I can't think of it doesn't matter let's move on if you want to challenge me on that and call me a dog gone liar that's fine let's continue that conversation alright so let's get into the comments here I appreciate these very much stylish 1012 says loving God is about to kill the wicked that's right that's right now <laughs> it would not be a loving God if God let the evil and um, you know exist forever if God couldn't stop evil that's no good you know if God can't if God doesn't kill the wicked then God is not a just God a cruel wicked God I mean just from a logical standpoint it doesn't make any sense to suggest God is uh, evil or whatever because he kills the unsaved here we go the why is that so it doesn't get any more wicked than people like yourself who are deceived by your own carnal mind, the devil. What happens to a two-year-old child that dies? What does a two-year-old child know? They certainly do not know Jesus. Okay, well, that's your, that's on you. All right. There's no way for me to know if a two-year-old knows Jesus there's no way for me to know if a 20 year old knows Jesus there's no way for me to know if anybody knows Jesus I, I get it people can say they know Jesus and be liars right and I, I showed that to you uh, several times over and over and over and over and oh oops whoa 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 I mean, it's there's numerous places we can go to, right? But let's go to Matthew seven, um, where it says, "Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the heaven, into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, and the will of my Father is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ." Many will say to me in that day, "Lord, Lord." We know, we know you, Jesus. We know you, Jesus. 
and um, have we not done many wonderful works you know have we not cast out devils have we not prophesied in thy name and then will I profess then I Jesus will profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity so <laughs> it it doesn't matter if they know Jesus they can say they know Jesus all day and all night but at the end of the day it's a matter of whether Jesus knows you in other words he chooses you you don't choose him you can choose him but that doesn't mean he's gonna choose you right um, and so we're saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves it is the gift of God not by works right lest any man should boast so what about a two-year-old and so you know this is something that's um, really um, one of the key you know points of uh, you know understanding the scripture uh, from a, you know from the very beginning when I when I first became a believer because back when I about five years before I was saved I was encouraged to read uh, the book of John and it, I wanted to read the Bible so that I could prove it wrong and so uh, my friend he encouraged me to start with the book of John by the time I got to the third chapter I realized that uh, the Bible's not wrong that I'm wrong the Bible proved me wrong it, it was just in, incredible I couldn't deny it. I had to be honest about it I wanted to know the truth while well, the truth was revealed to me and the truth was I am wicked and I need a savior that's the truth all right so in Hebrews 4 for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword I mean, can you imagine what it was like for me to read this after realizing that the Bible was proving me wrong it's like, wow this is incredible sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart wow ah, there's nothing like it so when we get to John chapter 3 a very interesting conversation going on here between Jesus and Nicodemus and you know Nicodemus tries to uh, challenge Jesus and uh, he says for we know that thou art a teacher from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him and Jesus says verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God Nicodemus saith unto him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into a mother's womb and be born and Jesus answered except a man be born of water which is being born from the womb from your mother's womb and of the spirit which is above the spirit of God he cannot enter into the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit what happens to a two-year-old 
that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Alright. So, if you're going to say, well, that two-year-old was not saved and it dies, then that two-year-old is not going to be resurrected into everlasting life. So, knowing that, understanding that hard truth, then you ought to know that we have um, a great responsibility to watch over our children so that they might get saved so they might get the same opportunity to be saved that we were given we have a great responsibility to look after our children all right and that's the fact and you're lying to people and deceiving people when you say that a two-year-old is going to be saved no matter what because what it implies is that you should kill your child if you let your child live then they might go from being saved to unsaved oh or I've saw blah 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 you get offended be offended get mad that's the truth Flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Huh? You don't like that? Well, then your problem's not with me. Your problem is with God. Flesh and blood does not enter, I don't know, does, does not inherit. That's the word I'm looking for. Now this I say, brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God right just because of uh, somebody's born of the flesh they're not saved it's only when they are born of the Spirit of God this is clearly what Jesus is teaching here except a man be born of water and of the Spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God now so having this discussion for a long time and for many years um, typically what people bring up is David's child all right so David's child he died and David was uh, oh David he was dying and David was was grieving and fasting until the child died and then he got up and ate and they were like uh, you know they're like what are you doing man you, your child just died and so uh, David says um, where he is oh let me I gotta find the verse here alright so I gotta find the verse So I gotta find the verse. Second Samuel twelve. Second Samuel twelve. I gotta think of the phrase here. You know, I didn't sleep very much last night. Second what I say, second twelve? Second twelve. Where he goes. Um, I apologize. Just give me a second here. Uh oh. Let me see if I can find. You know what? This for some reason. For some reason. Uh, this isn't looking familiar to me. Right there. There he is. Uh, there, there it is. Okay, so how? Uh, so let me go back up here. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken 
unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to his own house and when he required they set bread before him and he did eat. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive. But when the child was dead, thou did rise and eat bread. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. All right, so this is very clear that David is saying that he will go to the grave, but the child that is in the grave will not, you know, return to me. Now, there are people that will lie and say, well, this is, this child went to heaven and uh, David will go to heaven. And that's not what this is referring to at all. That's not being, that's not being honest. And it's being deliberately ignorant to make that claim. And I've heard a lot of people say that. And the reason why a lot of people say that is because that's what they were taught. Not using any logic, not using their brains at all. Alright, so we go to Acts chapter 2, I think. If I'm recalling correctly. Oh, no. If I'm recalling correctly, yeah, for David is not ascended into the heavens. So you compare that with, well, this is talking about David going to heaven. Well, he's not in the heavens. Even in Acts 2, it's clear. For David has not ascended into the heavens. This is clearly talking about his child going to the grave. And that his child will not return to him in this life now whether that child is resurrected I don't know I don't have that power you know at the last day whether David's resurrected I don't have that power right we like to think that you know so and so will be re resurrected at the last day but the bottom line is we don't have that power right so this is on God uh, this is between God and that individual it's not on us man you want to blame me okay no well, you're really blaming God if you want to say that children get saved no matter what and that's not true all right, not true at all. We have a great responsibility to give our children the opportunity that was given to us that we might have eternal life. That they might have eternal life. All right, so that, this is very important to understand. This is stuff to take serious. I mean, if you really care about the truth, then you know consider these things examine them and just trust God right so it's it's very clear that we must be born of the Spirit of God 
It's the only way. Right? Now, <laughs> what happens to an ignorant 90 year old man in a third world nation living in the jungles of Peru or whatever, South America? No. Well, if you know that there's a 90 year old man in, in the woods, go preach the gospel to that man. Right? Otherwise, you're just making stuff up. Well, what about, I mean, I, I hear this all the time. What about these. You know, fourth world people living under rocks, never seen society ever, don't even know that other people exist. They've been hiding in a rock, eating dirt for all their, for hundreds of years, thousands of years, whatever. Cavemen. What about them? <laughs> well, right, look, the bottom line is that. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. All right. Now we can go to Romans chapter one and see and understand very clearly, if you don't already, that the every nobody's got an excuse. Nobody has an excuse. Nobody has ever had an excuse for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power head, or I'm sorry, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse nobody has an excuse all right so if you know about a bunch of people living in the caves of uh, south america or whatever go preach to those guys i mean if you're worried about them go i mean i can't i can't change reality I can't change the facts I can't change the truth man we're, this is not a political debate you know popular opinion doesn't dictate the truth the truth is the truth even if all men reject it and the truth will play out and the lies will not what happens to the mentally ill who are sick? Well, you, say, you know, there are people who are perfectly mental, whatever. People who are very sharp and in great shape and who never get sick. Same thing. If they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will not be saved. Right? If they are not born of the Spirit of God, they will not see the kingdom of God. Now, uh, what you call mentally ill is what we used to call retards when I was growing up. Apparently you can't say retards anymore. I don't understand that, but um, however you want to um, label people with uh, nerve, uh, what I would consider nerve, uh, you know, how would you say that? Their nervous system is out of whack, I guess, you know. Uh, they have, there's nothing wrong with these people other than the, their nervous system doesn't um, act, uh, how do I say that? Their nervous system doesn't, um, respond the same way that ours does I guess there's something they've got some sort of nerve deficiency you know and so uh, it causes uh, stress in their body you know in my opinion right um, and then you've got those kind of people and then you've got also uh, what do you call those guys that are they get the they get the shots and then 
it sort of freezes up their brains a little bit and it makes it harder for them to react and express themselves and it oh, autism autism so you, you've got different types of people but I don't I wouldn't call them ill uh, mentally ill excuse me I wouldn't call them mentally ill we're, because they are mentally in my opinion just like you and me it's just their body limits their ability to express themselves in the same way that me and you do All right, so in my opinion my very strong opinion their internal thoughts are the same as you as um, you and I alright so you think about when you lay down at night and you think you know and you dream and that sort of thing they have that same in eternal our internal consciousness but their ability to say what they're thinking is challenging okay so anyways that so in my opinion there's it's really not a good thing to look down on anybody that has these sort of um, uh, challenges yeah there's no way in the world you should elevate yourself above them that's to me that's wicked all right uh, you should treat them exactly the way you'd want to be treated you know uh, just like everybody else man <laughs> I think it's horrible to treat somebody like that as a victim and they should be treated with as though they were equal in my opinion alright so anyways what happens to those who are impaired in many other ways blind deaf etc well that's I mean um, what can I say? Uh, same thing. Ant I could answer the same way. Just because somebody's... I mean, you want to talk about being blind and deaf. It's those people that do not believe. Man, it's not people that can't see, you know, like me. You know, I got, I got binoculars for glasses, right? I, can, I can't hardly see at all. And I can't hear. I can barely hear. So I'm, I'm deaf. I'm blind, and I'm dumb. I got it all, baby. So that has nothing to do with being able to understand the Word of God and being saved, being born of God. Uh, you people are disgusting because, according to you, they all go to hell see now I want I want to go back to that and burn forever so your God is a psychopathic monster not a loving God and by your false beliefs and ignorance of the scripture you spit in my father's face well, apparently your father is the devil because in your view evil should not be punished Right, now let's go back to this is interesting this is strong language because according to you they all go to hell you know I like that phrase it's powerful right if you get back in the day when you got mad at somebody you tell them to go to hell I can't tell you how many times I've been told to go to hell of course people don't say it as much nowadays at least not as many people are telling me to go to hell um, you know today it seems like a lot of people use the F word uh, F this and F that and F it all the F and F'ers and F and that so uh, it's just it doesn't matter but it's interesting to me because you see in these modern versions they change the word hell to Hades it's a joke man soften up hell make it so it's not so bad and everybody's a winner and I mean it just drives me nuts man it drives me nuts 
the word is hell. You know, what the hell? You know, what the Hades? I mean, people are just so effeminate, so soft, and so just weak. Right? Weak. Let's weaken the word hell and turn it to uh, sassy pants. Right? And why not, man? Why not? If you're going to go a little bit, why not go all the way? All right, so anyways, who cares? So, um, Wild Adventure 10 says, You're the one who's psychotic. Maybe check yourself before you wreck yourself. All right, that's a good response. All right, clever. Maybe check yourself before you wreck yourself. I think that means, what, check your pants before you poop your pants? That's good advice. Would you like to nail me to the tree now as well? Cursed is every man. Oh, yeah, I don't want to get into this. All right, so the great conversation here. Wedden says in Matthew 7, Those people lived righteously, but Jesus said, I never knew you. Everyone saved the same way, by faith, by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. I mean, we go and learn what this means. That go and learn what this means. Thou shalt have mercy and not sacrifice, right? Thou shalt have mercy and not sacrifice. So we desire mercy. Uh, it's only by the grace of God that we might be saved. All right. So, uh, that's a good point right there, Wedden. It's only through faith in Jesus Christ, it's only by the grace of God that we might be saved. It's not, uh, what you know, whatever, I don't even, actually, does he even, he, does, uh, he doesn't even say how you might get saved. You just don't punish the wicked. Don't punish the evildoer. I take it you're not a fan of George Bush, huh? <laughs> Well, neither am I. All right, so I said righteously, not self-righteously. Oh, he did. Okay. Well, that's different. All right. Uh, what about the third world nation that never heard of Jesus but lived righteously all of his ninety years? Uh, they okay. So I missed that part. All right. So. Um, so you think that there are people that live righteously. Well, so Jesus died in vain. You don't have to believe in Jesus. You just have to live righteously. I feel like I could go do an hour on that. Uh, let's see. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. As it is written. There is none righteous. No, not one. So you just told a lie right there. You're creating a false scenario. There's a, apparently there's some 90-year-old dude living under a rock that's never seen society. Maybe he hasn't he never even seen the light of day. He's just hiding in that little rock and he's righteous. And he's never sinned. Lived righteously. Well, the, the answer is obvious. He's going to hell. He's, he's a, 90 years on the fast track straight to hell. Uh, the bottom line is he's not righteous. There's none righteous. Only Jesus Christ is righteous, and only by him can he make us righteous. So without him, he's not righteous, not even close. All right. And when you're sitting on your toilet, I want to. I want you to think about how righteous you are. Okay. And you're not righteous. Okay. I didn't say righteous. I said self-righteous. You big twit. All right. Where's this at? Where are we at? I never said. I said righteously, not self-righteously. And Jesus said he never knew them because he was not in them. If he is not in 
you, you are none of his. Jesus is now the spirit mind of truth. Is the mind? That's weird. Because there's a difference between mind and spirit. It's not the same thing. As he tells us in John chapter 14, and he is in those that belong to him. He did not leave us alone as orphans, as he said. And if you or any other spirit mind, so again, this, these are two different things here. They're not the same of a person. The mind of a person is not the same as the spirit of the person. It's not the same thing. Um, the spirit mind of a person does not believe this and if you or any other spirit mind of a person does not believe this that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh then you are antichrist okay so look at that so here he is saying that a person that does not believe that Jesus has come in the fl flesh then you are an anti-Christ. Same person. Just eight hours earlier says a 90 year old man that's never heard of Jesus he says this is an anti-Christ. So you connect these dots he is saying that an anti-Christ lives righteously. That's the way I see it. You're saying that a person that has never heard of Jesus lives righteously, and a person that uh, does not believe Jesus has come in the flesh is an antichrist. So an antichrist is righteous. That's what I'm seeing. Now you might not see it that way, but that's how I see it. If everything was the same, life would be pretty dull and boring yes of course it would be dull and boring knowing I could walk down the street without being assaulted oh and it's exciting to think that you can go down walk down the street and get assaulted and raped and shot and killed it's so much fun and what would the kids do without all the pedos and perverts yeah. thank God for pedos and perverts life would be just so boring uh, no idea what you guys are talking about here. I think you fell off the side of the road is what I think. Alright, so that's it for these guys. Appreciate appreciate that conversation. That's some good stuff right there. Alright. Now, I w just want to touch on this guy. I touched on him yesterday. And I just want to share, I think, possibly a minute of what he says. I want you to consider this. And I forget what he says, but I'll get reminded. All the faithful people of God will be resurrected. Doesn't mean they're not already in heaven. The Bible is very, very clear. And we'll see this when we go to 1 Corinthians and 1 Thessalonians. I mean, all through the book of Revelation we've seen it. When a believer, someone in Christ, ceases to exist in this tent, as Paul puts it, in this body, they are in the presence of the Lord. They're in heaven. We've seen the oh, saints in heaven all... No, 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 that's it. Okay, so... Um, this goes back to... I remember back in... 1994. Well before I was a believer. But it was about a year after... It was about a year after I got my hands on the first Bible. Uh, I was just curious and learning. Somebody invited me to go to the church on Thursday, and I go, and uh, the preacher, he, the, one of the first things he talks about is, um, I want to say 94, but maybe it was 96, maybe it was 95, I don't know, maybe it was 97. 
I, I forget it doesn't matter who cares so the preacher he stands up there in front of God and everybody and says that his mother is in heaven and this was not long after I read John chapter 3 where it says oh no way is this it oh yeah no this is it John chapter 3 where it says no man has ascended up to heaven and here's the reverend telling me that his mother is in heaven watching down on us right now well that's a nice thought it's a, you know could be comforting I guess but it's not true it's not true at all and this fella here they are in the presence of the Lord they're in heaven we've no they're not in heaven I mean you have to say the Bible's a lie and that you are God Almighty and just to hell with the Bible listen to what I say that's you that's the only place the only position you can put yourself in to make that claim now obviously this gentleman is ignorant he's learning just like the rest of us all right so I don't know if uh, everybody understands uh, when I talk uh, I don't know if anybody understands um, you know that I understand that that I am gracious and I do not hate this guy but what when he teaches this idea that when you die you go to heaven that's that's wicked that's not true that doesn't mean he's going to hell it doesn't mean he's going to heaven it just means he's flat wrong he's lying and the reason he's lying is because he's been lied to somebody lied to him so now he just he assumed it was true and, and then he and then he teaches it okay so let's I'm only going to use one verse to destroy that idea okay in Daniel chapter 12 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt all right so where are they at they're in the dust of the earth all right now there are other places I could go to but that's enough if you don't get that you're not gonna get the other okay so when you die it is as though you're asleep right and I think he does bring up um, I could be wrong I thought he brought up the, the thief on the cross and Jesus says today you'll be with me in paradise well that guy he's gonna sleep he's it's like when he dies it's like he sleeps and the next thought the next moment he knows will be judgment all right it is appointed unto man once to die and then after this the judgment okay so let's continue we've seen the saints in heaven all throughout the book of revelation no we don't actually we do um see that when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that we are lifted up we are the saints of god we are lifted up to meet the lord in the air and then the wrath of God is poured upon the earth. Uh, it's consistent from Genesis to Revelation. Revelation does not teach a sci-fi doctrine of any sort. It does not contradict the, what we've read all throughout the Bible. Um, it confirms everything that we've read all throughout the Bible. And it gives us a deeper understanding. But you have to know the rest of the Bible. It, there is no contradiction at all. Drives me nuts. But it's their souls that are in heaven. It's not their physical bodies. Their physical bodies are resurrected when Jesus returns and we meet him in the air. He returns with his saints. The, the physical bodies of all those who are, who are asleep in Christ are resurrected and we're rejoined to our bodies. We meet him in the air and we return with him. That's what the Bible says. And so let's go... Right yeah, that's right. The Bible does say that when Jesus comes, we are resurrected. All right. But I, to me, there's no reason at all to teach this idea that when somebody dies, they're, they go to heaven. Uh, because it hasn't happened yet. And right now, all those that have died, it's though they are asleep their book is closed All right. there is no more writing in their book 
until the books are open at the end of the world. And whosoever their name is not written in the book of life is cast into um, the lake of fire, right? So it just, there's no reason, there's no benefit for teaching this idea that people go up into heaven. They are unconscious. They are asleep until the day of judgment the same thing that it's gonna happen to you and me right unless Jesus comes today you know it's all it's appointed unto all of us all right oh right now if you're watching following you can go to first Corinthians chapter 15 and you'll see if what it says is, is what I've just described to you John's talking about the first resurrection the first resurrection being when all the faithful people of God from throughout history are resurrected at the second coming of Jesus. And then we'll see what else goes along with that. I mean, there's more to be talked about in Revelation 20, but let's see if if Paul gives us any context in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So let me read to you 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 20, and I'm going to read through about verse 25 or so, okay? Here's what it says. I'm not, well, I could put it on the screen real quick. Let me do that. 1 Corinthians. And we'll go 15. Dumping around a little bit here today. Into that. It's going on nicely. Also, the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. That's right. So, this goes all the way back to Genesis 3. Alright. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right? For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So when... Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent he will destroy evil forever all right that's from Genesis to Revelation the same thing is taught did you see did you catch what that says it says as it for as an Adam all die so also in Christ shall all be made alive but each in his own order Christ the first fruits the first you know, the first fruits he is the first resurrection right he is so we go to revelation 20 and it talks about uh, the first resurrection blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection right so what is the first resurrection well um, <laughs> I mean Really, you got to say that Jesus Christ died in vain in order to make this argument that he is not the first resurrection. And you got to be out of your cotton picking mind to say that Jesus is not the first resurrection. Really, Jesus flat out says, I am the resurrection. But you say, what? What do you say? He's not? Jesus lied? What, you're going to be the first resurrection? What, you're going to be reigning and ruling on the earth over unsaved people and telling them what to do and having sex with all the women that you want? What, what is your dream scenario? What is this doctrine that you're teaching? Just be honest. What is it that you are imagining is going to take place? All right, and because I believe that if you play out the scenario, the doctrine in your mind, and 
I mean, if your doctrine is anything other than Jesus being the first resurrection, just play that scenario out in your mind. Think it through logically. Think about the scenario. Are you living, are you saved in your mortal body, living among females that are immortal? Are you going to have power over them? Are you going to rule over them? Are you going to be able to tell them what to do? And are in your mind, are they going to fulfill your sexual fantasies? Is this the doctrine that you're teaching? Because right, I, this, I'm telling you, this is what a lot of people are teaching. Ninety-nine point nine percent of the preachers today are all driven by their own lust, exactly as the Bible said would happen. And I mean, it's it's all over the Bible. Deceivers waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived right they're walking after their own lust last days walking after their own lust we read in Matthew 24 Jesus says take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying that Jesus is the Christ and shall deceive many ninety nine point nine percent of the preachers today are teaching this idea that there will be unsaved people living after Jesus returns and this is the reason why because they imagine that they will have rule over unsaved females and that they will be able to order them make them do whatever they wish whatever they want them to do fulfilling their sexual perversions that that's what's going on I firmly believe that and you hear me talk about it over and over and over and over again to me it's clear it's crystal clear why would you teach this idea that unsaved people are, are gonna live after Jesus returns if not for the this idea that you're gonna have power over them you're gonna be able to tell them what to do the same perverts teach uh, that in uh, in Islam and in Mormonism right and so also do we have preachers pretending to be Christians saying that Jesus is the Christ and are teaching that when Jesus comes the unsaved will get a second chance and we see this in the Hollywood movie Left Behind with Nicolas Cage the unsaved get one more chance and uh, it's a disgusting doctrine alright so just to be clear this what this fellow is saying um, uh, here. First fruits of resurrection was who? Jesus Christ. There we go. The one who died, was in the grave for three days and three nights, and then was resurrected with a new, eternal, everlasting body. Right. He rebuilt the temple. Again, people that say that there has to be a third temple being built, they're completely ignorant and downright stupid when it comes to Scripture because Jesus talked about tearing down the temple and rebuilding it in three days he was talking about his body and people today still can't figure it out some people ask the question well, what about people like Lazarus or, or other people that have been resurrected okay. in the Bible before Jesus there's a difference all those people who were resurrected before Jesus were not resurrected unto life there we go all right the good answer okay so so far uh, everything this guy's teaching is is pretty good you know he's got this corrupt ESV I believe it is and uh, I got obvious problems with that but to me this this one from what I'm seeing uh, this fella is he's learning and he's on the right track right as far as in time prophecy 
the end time eschatological fancy word this and that right he's getting it um, so uh, it's a good job out of him and again that's, that's all I got for today hopefully I've given you something to think about and uh hope you enjoyed and ah uh, and of course man come on i don't mind call me stupid call me deceived call me wicked present a view uh that you maybe you don't even believe it just present a view and let's talk about it because i think this helps me i really do i think it helps me when people come at me like this um whether it's supporting or coming against me um, challenge me right challenge me I think this will help me and hopefully it'll help you as well All right, have a good day enjoy this day look you can go outside wake you can wake up tomorrow you can go outside and get run over by a bus and so why not just enjoy this day okay don't worry don't worry about tomorrow or next week or next year just enjoy this day man you could go outside tomorrow and get run over by a bus and all that worrying that you might do today will be for nothing so just enjoy this day